you go through so many changes in here. It's like, that's what we need today. We need to re-engineer ourselves. If you've ever seen one of these Baja races, you know, a thousand miles in the desert, or, you know, there's a million different races that if you took a normal car, you'd be out of it and probably die in the first day or so. But what they've done is re-engineer the shock absorbers, the size of the tires, the engine system. And we need to re-engineer ourselves for winter. We need to re-engineer ourselves so that we can thrive, not just survive during this time. And that's what I'm seeing people do in their life and their businesses. I mean, it's it's been really, I know it sounds crazy, but it's been one of the more beautiful times. I hate the fear that's been generated in so many people on Dooley. I mean, this CDC themselves, I wrote this in my book, there's a section in my health book, and I quote directly from the CDC. What's the number one risk factor other than age? 80% of people die of COVID, 79.8% are overweight and obese, extremely overweight. Something you can easily do something about, nobody talks about. And number two is fear, because the anxiety makes people change their breath, they can't fully oxygenate. So it's like, there's a lot within our control if we just wake up. But the beautiful part of COVID is a lot of people waking up to what's possible, seeing where it is, seeing how they could change their entire business. Because when things happen and they're gonna be unjust things, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter what country you're from, injustice is everywhere. It's gonna happen to all of us at various times, right? Or it may not just be injustice, just like, wow, you got cancer. I mean, it's like, you know, what I do to deserve this? It isn't like that. It's not something you earn by brownie points. It's like, okay, what am I gonna do with what life has brought me? And my greatest growth that's helped me help so many other people is because, you know, if someone tells me I, I got a tumor in my brain and I'm gonna die. And I'm like, I don't accept that, right? I got a tone rotator cuff and there's, you know, you're gonna have to go through six months of rehab. I, I'm not gonna accept that. There's gotta be another way, you know? And so, and, and the things you can't control, you learn, to learn how to accept and learn from, you know? And so I think COVID has offer, offered that opportunity. I'm reaching more people because of it. I'm touching more lives. I'm having an impact. I, you know, my wife and I have tried to have a child for quite many years. I have five grandkids and I have uh, four kids, now five, but I have a nine month old now. I have a 48 year old daughter and a nine month old daughter. Give you an idea. <laughs> that's incredible, man. So that's the I'm gift of COVID because I was home. <laughs> we can say, let's give it another shot. There you go. Uh, I want to hit you with another Tony Robbins quote and um, this one, I think, sums up what you're saying here. Uh, you cannot fear change and do everything the way it's always been done. And so fear you talk a lot about. But man, I have people in my life that are older than me. And many of them, they are calcifying as they get older. And I watch what really served them well in their 20s and 30s. And I may have um, discussed this with you before, but I'm haunted by a quote that genius is a young man's game. And as a late bloomer, that never sat well with me. But when you look at people that win Nobel Prizes, it's almost always for work that they do in their early 30s. They get awarded in their 60s, but they did yeah. the work in their 30s. And seeing how you're going after like cutting edge stuff. Um, I know one of the companies, I think you sold it to Apple uh, in the AR VR space, if I remember correctly. Um, I've heard you talking about Bitcoin for years now. Uh, I know you know about NFTs, like it's how are you so able to embrace change and how the hell do you stay this enthusiastic in a world that changes this fast as you get older? Why are you not like so many people are crippled by that? They just want things to stay the same. I think as early on, I realized, that, you know, one of the things you have to understand about life is everything changes and everything ends. And that kind of sounds heavy on the front end, but it's a truth. If everything changes and everything ends, number one, it should make you appreciate what you have right now. And then my view is what's next is always better. If I make it so, it's my job to make it so. And so I think, you know, for me, I look at it and say, you know, when you said uh, genius is a young man's game, I think it's total bullshit. Um, I think passion is the genesis of genius. If you've got enough passion, you're gonna find answers nobody else does, but most people run out of fuel, meaning they get tired, they get exhausted, they get burnt out, they get, uh, you know, the law of familiarity. They're around something so much, they take it a little bit for granted. And I've managed to see something in myself that I found in every great leader that I've ever respected, and that is, I, I value intelligence immensely, but I know really smart people can't fight their way out of a paper bag pragmatically, right? I'm sure you do too. 
What I see is the one common denominator of people that are successful over a lifetime is the sustained hunger. Hunger is the number one factor. When I see somebody, I don't care what age they are, I don't care what their background is, if they're hungry to improve, to change, to make something happen, I mean, if you look at Richard Branson, he's as hungry today in his late 60s as he was at 16 years old in that crypt starting virgin. You know, you look at my buddy Mark Benioff, you know, he's like, he's kind of like in his early 50s right now. Mark is more hungry today than when I knew him 12, 14, 15 years ago when he was first coming up with the idea of, so I'm gonna, you know, he went to one of my seminars over and over again, the UPW, you know which one. And he went there like four or five times and he was sitting in the front row, he's a tall guy, he introduced himself and said, you've convinced me I'm gonna leave this company I work for as an employee here and I'm gonna go start this new company called salesforce.com. Wow. And he says, Tony, we're gonna do a hundred million dollars in business and we're gonna change business. Now he's doing whatever, 30 billion right now. <laughs> but, it's, but it's because he hasn't lost the hunger. And I think the law of familiarity is what destroys a relationship.